beloved people of God, good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a joy to welcome you to Parkwood this morning, whether you're here with us in person or joining us online. It's a delight to see you all. As we gather, I have quite a few announcements for us, so hang in there, we'll get through it. Um, the first is that on the back table, you may have noticed, there are poinsettia order forms. Um, every year we do this and you can purchase a poinsettia to help us decorate the front of the sanctuary through Christmas Eve. Um, and you can purchase those in honor or in memory of someone or just because you like them. Um, we ask that these order forms be returned at the latest by December 1st so that we can get that order in to the florist. Um, so you can, there is an envelope in the back. You can uh, leave the order forms and payment in there, um, or you can drop those by the office. On that note, <laughs> as I say that, um, the church office will be closed this week as Kathy uses her vacation time um, and we celebrate Thanksgiving. So if you need something between now and next Sunday, or if you have any sort of emergency, please call my cell phone. If you don't have that number, there are blue cards on the table with the hand sanitizer in back that have that number on them. It starts with 815. So if you don't have that number, make sure you pick up a card on your way out. We also have in your bulletin an insert which, aha, it's on the back of your calendar, for the Degage Christmas Store. Um, many of you are used to doing Christmas gifts for families in need. Um, this is a little bit different, and I love the way that this sets us up for giving, um, but giving in a really sustainable and helpful way. So, the Degage Christmas Store um, is run by the Heartside Ministries in downtown Grand Rapids. And it allows folks who are homeless, who may not have stable housing, um, to come and purchase at a significant discount gifts for their loved ones. So when we give, we are enabling someone else to then have that joy of giving gifts to their loved ones in a way that wouldn't be possible for them otherwise. Um, this gives them an extra dose of dignity around the holidays. Um, and you may have noticed that there are some seemingly <coughs> random things on this list. Things like crock pots <laughs> or toaster ovens. Um, and we had a couple of questions about those. But if you think about it, folks who may be living in hotels, motels, that's one way that they can have access to cooking tools is with those electric um, cooking elements. So, um, I know we just did harvest bags, but I encourage you next time you're at the store to pick up an extra thing of sacks to grab whatever, whatever is on your heart, let's say. Um, and you can leave those out in the hallway by the bulletin board um, up until December, what's the date on that? I lost my name. December 5th. December 5th. So you have two more weeks. Two more weeks. Thank you. All right. Today, as we talk about de decorating for Christmas, we will have the hanging of the greens after worship. So if you are at heart a decorator, if you love to do that, please do stick around and we will put you to work somehow, helping us get ready for Advent and Christmas. I also want to note we will have a congregational meeting on December 19th that will be approving my terms of call for 2022. 2022, we're already there. It's mind-boggling to me. Um, but that's something that we do every year. That's something that the congregation needs to approve. Um, so December 19th, stick around right after worship and we will have a congregational meeting. You will also notice in your bulletin there is a nomination form for elders. Every year we take nominations for our session, 
Um, and there's more information on this sheet. I won't read it all to you. Um, but if you or someone you know, um, you think would be really, really great to help us lead in this season, uh, please do submit that name. You can leave it in the offering plate. You can drop it in the church office. Um, we will be glad to have those. We ask you to um, bring those by December 12th, so you have a few weeks. <clears throat> All right. And then next Sunday, this especially goes out to the people who are watching this online, we will have what we're calling a virtual coffee hour. So we will gather on Zoom at 2 p.m. with anyone and everyone who wants to join us for a virtual fellowship hour. This will be pretty unstructured, but it's a way to catch up with folks who may not be able to join us on Sunday morning. So even if you're here on Sunday morning, I encourage you to think about joining us online as well to catch up with those folks. Um, so, and that link is in the press. If you need it, I can also send it to you individually. Just let me know. All right. I think I got everything on my list. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Chris. Um, I put an announcement in the bulletin. If you're interested in singing in the choir and you're not sure if you want to commit to all the time, um, but you love Christmas music, we'd love to have you sing with us in December. We'll have a rehearsal next Sunday from 12 to 1.30, right after the service. So you could go grab some lunch and come back. If you want to just try it out, let me know. We'd love to have you. Um, we're singing two Sundays and Christmas Eve in December. In the bulletin, or the weekly messenger, it says the rehearsal's on December 28th, but that's a little late for Christmas music, so I will move it to next Sunday, and I'd love to talk with you about it after the service, if you're interested. Wonderful, thank you. All right, with all of that said, let us worship God together. Please join me in the call to worship. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for God has looked favorably on God's people and redeemed them. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for God has called us from his own beloved and called each of us by name. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for God has blessed all of creation and called us together. Blessed be the Lord our God of Israel.
first confession. We did not confess our sins in the hope of forgiveness. We confess our sins with the certainty of forgiveness. For the Apostle Paul assures us that we have been rescued from the power of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so, with that promise, that assurance, that redemption, we confess our sins before God and one another. Join me in our prayer of confession. Oh my God, we confess that we have been elected to declare Jesus the King and the model for our lives. We have been equipped to all that others to follow the ways of Christ, yet slow to do the same. We have been bold in demanding generosity, mercy, and forgiveness, yet quietly.
Verses 4 through 8 in Revelation 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, says, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. full circle. Over the past weeks and months, we have been following Jesus through the Gospel of Mark as he makes his way to Jerusalem and the cross. Next week, we will begin the season of Advent, which is the start of our church year. In some ways, that makes today kind of like our churchy New Year's Eve, where we remind ourselves where we've come from, and where we're going. So as we look forward to cute baby Jesus swaddled tightly and lying peacefully in the manger, it's important for us to remember who this adorable baby grows up to be, the King of Kings, crucified and risen. So our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18. Jesus is standing before Pilate. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. 
If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This final Sunday in the church year is called Christ the King Sunday. It's the day we remember not only who Jesus was on earth, but that Jesus still lives and reigns forever at the right hand of God. The story of Jesus' crucifixion, which we just heard a tiny part of, perhaps more than any other moment in scripture, demonstrates for us precisely what kind of king we have. Jesus chose the way of the cross. He chose to die a painful death so that the whole world might be redeemed. Every sin forgiven, every mistake washed away. His friends and disciples mostly abandoned him and fled for their lives, choosing to save themselves. And while he was dying, the religious leaders mocked him, and the Roman soldiers drew straws for his clothes. Luke tells us that even one of the condemned men crucified next to him couldn't help joining in on the mockery. And still, he asks, that all would be forgiven. He doesn't retaliate. He doesn't sass anybody back. He doesn't hulk out and come down from the cross. When the other condemned man asks for mercy, he receives it fully and freely. No one asks what he did or why he did it. There's no big ceremony. There's just mercy and the promise of peace at the last. The King of Kings is not a tyrant sitting on a throne somewhere waiting to zap us with lightning bolts the moment we mess up. The King of Kings is the same man who willingly sacrificed himself for others, who was raised from the dead by the power of God, and who calls each and every one of us to follow in his footsteps. But we don't do that just by thinking about how great Jesus is. Take some actual shoes to help us live into the life and love of Jesus. You're probably wondering why all of my chucks are on the chancel. <laughs> yep. Uh, these shoes give us a visual walkthrough of the church calendar, which is based on the major events in Jesus' life. Each season or holiday has its own color to help remind us where we are. And every Sunday, except for today, my shoes match those colors. Today I have my Parkwood trucks on because all of my shoes are on the chancel. <laughs> so I've put them in order for us up here, and you'll also notice there's a calendar on the front of your bulletin. So you can use that to follow along as well, especially if you can't see the checks up here very well. I put them in order for us, and we are going to run through the whole church year in the next 10 minutes. So buckle up. Advent begins the church year, and it is one of my favorite seasons. Because we don't begin the church year with resolutions with grand promises of self-improvement that we all know would be forgotten by Christmas anyway. Instead, we start, we start every year by waiting on God to show up in our midst. I often call purple our waiting color because it goes with the seasons where we are waiting and preparing for something amazing Purple in the ancient world was also the color associated with royalty. So in a roundabout sort of way, purple also reminds us that Jesus is king, that God is God and we are not. This gives us space to breathe, to stop our frantic striving 
for perfection and acceptance, to let God show up for us. The culmination of Advent is, of course, Christmas, which is celebrated with the color white. At Christmas, we celebrate that God isn't up there somewhere waiting on us to get our acts together, but that God came to us in the most intimate way possible, by becoming one of us. Christmas, where God becomes human and vulnerable, a tiny baby born to working class parents and laid not in a royal crib, but in a feed trough, is the beginning of God's grand rescue plan. As the Gospel of John puts it, God so loved the world that God gave the one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So we celebrate Christmas for 12 days, beginning on the 25th, beginning on the 25th, and ending on Epiphany, which is January 6th. This celebrates the arrival of the wise people, bringing Jesus gifts fit for a king. Epiphany is on January 6th. We usually celebrate it on the closest Sunday. The color for that day is also white. After Epiphany comes a growing season marked by the color green, where we focus on Jesus' ministry in the world and how God is calling us to grow as God's people. Because the second half of the church calendar shifts every year, this season might be three weeks or seven. It's a surprise every year. Fun fact, next year is eight weeks. Yay. After that growing season comes Ash Wednesday. This is the day that we mark ourselves with a cross made of ash. This is both a reminder of our humanity, that each of us will one day return to ash and dust, and a symbol of our desire to repent of all of the ways that we fail, to dedicate ourselves to being disciples of Jesus. The ashes we use come from the previous year's Palm Sunday palms, which reminds us just how fragile and finicky our hearts can be. Ash Wednesday launches us into Lent, which is also a purple season. Lent is modeled on Jesus' 40-day fast in the wilderness, after his baptism and before he began his public ministry. That's why some choose to fast from something during Lent. And that's why Lent is 40 days long, not counting Sundays. Sundays don't count in Lent. It's a long story. Fun fact, Lent was, at one point in the early life of the church, the season where new converts to Christianity would go through an intensive period of study and mentoring in preparation for baptism on Easter Sunday. Today, Lent is more popularly known for those people who give up chocolate or swearing or whatever, and fish fries. <laughs> but the goal of Lent is not just to randomly punish yourself. The goal of Lent for most Protestant Christians is to prepare our hearts for Holy Week and Easter by reminding ourselves what it means to sacrifice something we enjoy for something that's better. Holy Week is what we call the week leading up to Easter. It begins with Palm Sunday, where Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people are so excited and delighted that they cut branches off the palm trees to wave around and line the streets. They sing, Hosanna, which means save us. Maundy Thursday has a slightly weird name, but it's another one of my favorites. This is the celebration of Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples, when he said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The word Maundy comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means commandment. This is the day we remember Jesus' generosity and compassion. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, knowing that at the end of that night, 
Jesus would be betrayed by someone he loved, someone he fed at that table. Good Friday is the consequence of that betrayal and the climax of God's redemption plan. <clears throat> Jesus knew that he would die, and he went to the cross willingly on our behalf, enduring everything that came with capital punishment in ancient Israel. We call it Good Friday, not because what happened to Jesus was good in any sense of the word, but because on that day, as we have already heard, Jesus showed just how good and loving and generous and forgiving God really is. Saturday of Holy Week is sometimes known as Silent Saturday. It's the space between Good Friday and Easter morning where grief and fear are real and present, and that's okay, because we know what Jesus' friends didn't. Sunday's coming. After the roller coaster of Holy Week, Easter feels explosive. Where there was mourning, now there is dancing. Where there was hate and betrayal, now there is forgiveness and reconciliation. Where there was death, now there is life. Some of us get up to see the sun rise together, waiting for those first rays of light so someone can burst in the door and say, Christ is risen. We crave Easter all year round, I think. And that's our heart's way of reminding us what the new life we have in Christ feels like at its best. Easter is also a season. Easter is celebrated with white both on Easter Sunday and for the seven Sundays afterwards. Seven Sundays of celebrating resurrection and walking with the disciples as they encounter the resurrected Jesus in many times and places and ways. This is the season when we also receive the Great Commission. Go into all the world and make disciples of Christ Jesus, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus fulfills that promise on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes rushing in, looking like fire and sounding like a freight train, and the gathered people hear the good news of Jesus' resurrection for the first time in their own heart languages. God breaks down nearly every barrier, and the church begins to form. The color for Pentecost is red, like fire. After Pentecost, we enter another long, growing season, often called Ordinary Time. It's not called Ordinary Time because it's ordinary or boring or doesn't have any meaning. Originally, Ordinary Time just meant counting time because we would count the Sundays. If you've paid attention to your bulletins for the last six months or so, you may have noticed the 28th Sunday in ordinary time. That's what we're doing. These days, I prefer to call it growing time because we get to explore and study and wonder about everything from Jesus' ministry and the early church in the New Testament to the creation story, the prophets, and the Psalms in the Old Testament the season when we wrestle with the Bible and its stories for all that they're worth to help us cultivate a faith that both sustains and challenges us. It's why the color is green, to remind us to keep growing, to keep facing the sun. The end of this growing season comes Christ the King Sunday, which is where we are today celebrating the cosmic king who is above all powers. And so we come full circle to start again, walking with Jesus. The church calendar is never meant to be confining, but instead to give us an opportunity to be formed over and over and over again by the life of Jesus. As scholar and author Henry Nowen puts it, you don't think your way into a new way of living. You live your way into a new way of thinking. 
going through this process over and over and over again gives us the opportunity not just to tell this story, but to experience it in new and different ways. We get to live the anticipation of Advent, the excitement of Christmas, the long weeks of Lent, roller coaster of Holy Week, the joy of Easter, again and again and again. We are commissioned again every Pentecost and planted like seedlings for each growing season. So, as we begin again this week, even as we give thanks for all that God has given us, my prayer for you all as we start this journey once more is this now familiar blessing from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen.
in whom all things in heaven and on earth were created. Let us affirm God's reign over all creation, continuing our worship as we offer ourselves. Holy God, through the As we gather our hearts in prayer this morning, I have a couple of things for us. Uh, the first is Tom Jilson, who we've been praying for for several weeks. Um, he finally has a date for surgery. That will be December 10th. Um, they're planning on doing at least a valve replacement and maybe some stents. Um, and Tom also did get permission to go to his son's wedding, which is this week. Um, so hopefully they're on their way there now. Um, but we continue to pray for Tom as he waits on surgery. Um, and 
as he celebrates this week. Also a note um, that Kathy Redunzel, her dad Richard, whom we've been praying for for several weeks as well, passed away yesterday. Um, and so we grieve with Kathy um, and we pray for her and her family as they grieve that loss. How else can we pray today? Prayers for all the hospital workers across the United States because the situation is so dire. Absolutely. Um, prayers for all of the hospital workers across the country and the world, um, and especially here in West Michigan. Spectrum, I don't know if you saw that, but sent out essentially a red alert saying they are very near in capacity um, and encouraging folks to be careful. So. We will pray for all those who are caring for caring for others in this season. Any others? Betty. Um, my niece Crystal Albert has COVID. Mm. Canceled our Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, thank you. So Betty's niece Crystal um, has COVID, um, and unfortunately, her family won't be able to gather. well with us for quite a while um, and thanks to the property team um, that has been fixed so you will notice there are no longer large speakers and instead the sound is coming from where it should be up on the ceiling um, so thanks be to God for capable people who can help us worship well any other Go to God in prayer together. God of love, we come to you with hearts that are full, full of many, many things, full of joy and anticipation, full of worry and grief. God, we pray your presence and your blessing on all of us gathered here and all those who will gather with us online. God, we give you thanks for Tom, that he finally has a surgery date. God, we pray that you would keep him well um, so that he may be able to celebrate well at his son's wedding this week. God, we pray that you would bless them as they celebrate um, and bring Tom and Carla back safe. And we pray for hospital workers across the country and especially here in our own backyard. God, we pray that you would continue to give them strength, that you would keep them safe and healthy, um, and that you would give us wisdom to care for ourselves and care for one another well. And we pray for Crystal as she battles COVID. We pray that um, her symptoms would be mild, that she would recover quickly, um, and that she would be well cared for in the meantime. God, we lift up Al and Kathy and their family as they grieve the loss of her dad. God, this has been a long road for them, um, and we pray that your peace and comfort and love would surround them in this time and the days and weeks and months ahead. We also give you thanks and praise for this ability to gather here together as your beloved people in worship, in community and communion, and in fellowship with one another. And we pray that you would bless each of these people as they celebrate this week and bring us back safely in worship and prayer and praise. 
And now we join our hearts and our voices together in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And we us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. to you and give you 